First of all, welcome everybody. It's good to see a full room at this time in the morning and day three of the conference. I know it's a bit exhausting at the time. My name is Ignacio Duram. I'm a medical oncologist from Santander in Spain, and I will be moderating this uh, press conference. I think it's an exciting one. We're going to hear some quite interesting data that could really change practice. So I think it's, the, it's quite a moment for what we call geniturinary oncology. I have here with me today a group of experts. We have Dr. Robert Mozart. He's a medical oncologist from Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. We have Dr. Chris Parker from Royal Mastin. He's a clinical oncologist. So Dr. Mozart will be commenting on the kidney cancer work, Dr. Parker on the prostate cancer. And then as a commentator, I have my colleague, Dr. Hannan from the Netherlands, from the Netherlands Cancer Institute in Amsterdam. I'm gonna be playing two roles. I'll be the moderator of the session, and at one point I'll be also the commentator of the uh, prostate cancer uh, work. Let me just follow uh, with you and remind you a couple of uh, housekeeping messages which are important, and probably the most important is this one. This is an embargo press briefing, so please keep it to yourself, you cannot put anything out there until the data has been communicated. We got a presidential session, or which is gonna happen around 4.30 this afternoon, so nothing can be uh, released before that. What else I have to tell you? Uh, you always wonder whether any of the speakers will be available after the press conference. I have good news and bad news. So Dr. Parker will have to leave, so whatever you want to excuse from him, you've got to do it during the press conference because he has other commitments, so he will be out of here at 9 o'clock. Dr. Moser has been very kind, and he's going to be able to stay until 9.30. So if there is any questions left, you can, you know, go after him. And I think with that, uh, it's probably all I wanted to say. And these are our disclosures of the two I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Chris Parker uh, to the podium, and Dr. Parker, as I said, from Royal Maston, and he's going to comment on the stampede abstract. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. So this afternoon, I'll be presenting the results from the stampede trial. Uh, looking at prostate radiotherapy in men with metastatic prostate cancer. And here are my disclosures. Now, until now, men with metastatic prostate cancer have always been treated with drugs. And it was thought that if the cancer had spread elsewhere, then there was no point in treating the prostate itself with surgery or radiotherapy, it's just too late. Now, we have an expression in England, it's no point shutting the stable door after the horse has bolted. I don't, I don't know if that translates, but, but, that, okay. <laughs> but that's the idea. However, in animal models of metastatic cancer, it's been shown that if you treat the primary tumour, then the metastases actually slow down and the animals live longer. So we wanted to ask the question, is the same thing true of men with metastatic prostate cancer in the clinic? And in particular, we hypothesized that if there was a benefit for treating the prostate, it was likely to be greater in men who had a low metastatic burden rather than many, many metastases. And so this is the trial design. It's men with newly diagnosed metastatic prostate cancer there were over 2,000 of them in the trial, and they were randomized either to receive standard drug treatment only or standard drug treatment plus prostate radiotherapy. This is the only results slide I'm going to show you, but it's the key findings. So patients with low burden disease are those in whom the cancer has spread just to nearby bones or to lymph glands. And patients with high burden disease are those in whom the cancer has spread to distant bones or to other organs such as the liver. And if we look at the high burden patients first of all, there's no survival benefit 
to prostate radiotherapy. The curves are overlying one another. On the other hand, in patients with low burden disease, there's a significant survival benefit for prostate radiotherapy. And so the hazard ratio is 0.68, so in other words, a 32% improvement in survival. And it's highly significant, statistically speaking. And the absolute improvement in survival at three years is from 73 to 81%, so the absolute benefit is 8%. And it's perhaps also worth saying that prostate radiotherapy is a simple treatment, it's very well tolerated, and it's widely available in any cancer center throughout the world. So this summarizes our findings. Prostate radiotherapy did not improve overall survival in the whole trial population, but it did improve survival in those with a low metastatic burden, and it was well tolerated. And so the implications, so going forward, prostate radiotherapy should now be a standard treatment option for men with newly diagnosed metastatic prostate cancer with a low metastatic burden. And the second point is an interesting one, and it relates to men with regional nodal metastases, but not metastatic disease. And these men were not included in our trial. However, if prostate radiotherapy improves survival for men with distant metastases, we can be very confident that it would improve survival for men with regional nodal disease. And there aren't any trials addressing that question, and currently many of these men receive drug treatment alone. So going forward, prostate radiotherapy should be a standard treatment for these men as well. And then lastly, we've proven the principle in prostate cancer that treating the primary can improve survival in men with metastatic disease. And so this concept should now be tested in patients with oligometastatic disease, low burden metastatic disease from other malignancies. Thank you very much. <laughs>